First, let's look at what is an ASM instance. An ASM instance is built on the same instance concepts that an Oracle database is built on. So it's a memory structure, but a very lightweight memory structure with some background processes. So in a typical Oracle server installation, if you are using ASM, then ASM is the layer below the database instance. You could use ASM with a single instance standalone database or you can create a cluster of ASM instances in a grid infrastructure cluster. So the grid infrastructure takes care of ensuring the ASM instances work along together. Now the underlying storage should be a shared storage which can be accessed both by ASM instance as well as by the database instance. Why is that so? You need to be careful to understand that the actual I.O on your files that are kept inside ASM are not done by ASM. They are done by the respective database instances. But then, where is a file kept? There could be a bunch of disks that are together in ASM and the metadata about the files and the disk group related details, we will talk about disk groups in a video shortly. All this is kept by ASM and it maintains this metadata in the list of disks. So the ASM instance only provides something like a file system information through which the Oracle database instance can get the information, but the actual IO of reading or writing is done by the database instance. So that's an ASM instance, which is the underlying instance, a lightweight instance with its own background process, which lays out the metadata based on which the Oracle database instances can work with files. What are disk groups? As the name suggests, a disk group is a group of disks. Like the case of a volume manager, where when you work with a storage array, you have a bunch of disks. They all have to be grouped into a volume. In the case of an Oracle ASM, the group of disks together are called as a disk group. So a given physical disk which is present to the ASM can be made only part of one disk group. You can have as many disk groups as you want, but it's not really necessary. You could just create, for example, two disk groups, one to keep my data files and another to keep my backup. So your read log files might be sitting in another disk group if you want, but you can put them along with the data files. So you might create a fast run which is based out of a bunch of disks and a slower run which is based off another bunch of disks. But remember, it is not necessary for you to use LUNs from storage array in ASM. If you want, you can use LUNs from storage or you can present ASM with just a JBOD. A JBOD stands for just a bunch of disks. Because when you get a JBOD from a storage vendor, you don't get a volume manager from them. ASM will become the volume manager and ASM provides a list of features that you can do when you use it as a JBOD bunch of disks. But either way, ASM supports both. If you already have a volume manager and a storage array in place, you can create LUNs out of them, present it to ASM. Or if you use JBOD, you can present the list of disks from the storage array to ASM. Either way, a group of disks is called as a disk group with into which you will place files. So whenever we say we need to put a file in ASM, you don't put it in ASM directly, you basically put it into a disk group. And the metadata about disk group is also maintained by the ASM instance.